if you went and looked at the free throw disparities between teams, there's a handful of them that are kind of bunched together. The Lakers are like 700 more free throw attempts than the <laughs> second closest team. And so it's been this way for a couple years where they're like, LeBron, AD, Lakers, getting all the whistles. Yeah. And you seem to think the same thing is happening, but in women's college basketball with the most popular player and team, Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes. You think the fix is in for them? I mean, it's not even a debate. It's not even close. This was an absolute rigged game, and I will listen to no other arguments against it. You think it was rigged? You don't yes. think they just got the benefit I mean, of the whistle the being at home? That's the essence of being a game being rigged. They got every whistle in that game. Now, the mm. Lakers, I feel like, could at least make the argument, and I don't know this, so let me take a shot in the dark here. Okay. Anthony Davis, big guy. LeBron James likes to go to the paint. Like we we score a lot of our points around the basket. We attack the hoop. We're right? aggressive. We're aggressive, right? Yeah. They're not one of these teams that just shoots perimeter shots the entire time. So that's going to lead to more foul calls. Now, do they get calls because they're the Lakers? Of course they do. I I was game over West Virginia. Was the highest rated women's game. It had four point nine million viewers. Yeah, nearly five. You, the Adam Silver would like sell his soul <laughs> to have five million people watch an NBA game right now. Yeah, like you got to get all the way to the conference finals to get that kind of number. Caitlin Clark is a, mag, a ratings magnet. Mm -hmm. Women's basketball cannot have her go out in the second round of the tournament as the number one seed. They just can't. You cannot allow that. I love this take. The foul discrepancy in this game against West Virginia, and this, by the way, was like a widespread take of like even Dame I saw was tweeting about how West Virginia was getting hosed. There were a couple and ones. I'm like, there was Anybody no foul. Anybody watching this game had that same take. The foul discrepancy, let me go find this. Fouls. It was 27 to 11. They called 27 fouls on West Virginia, 11 on Iowa. The free throw discrepancy, 30 to 5. Yeah. They won the game by 10. It was like a two-point game with however many minutes to go. They made 22 more free throws than West Virginia did mm -hmm. and won the game by 10. Yep. And you might ask yourself, well, why? It's because 5 million people watched a second-round women's tournament game. That blew every men's game out over the weekend. Yeah. Like, the, the, the men's tournament's actually rating it's decently well. It's doing really well. well, yes. Not 5 million good in the second round of the tournament. And so they need to protect their golden goose. This game was one that they knew exactly what they were doing. Well, if they're going to rig things, they need to rig it and make it really good and give us all of the top players. <laughs> like, you need to give us uh, Paige Beckers. You need to give us Juju Watkins. I need Cameron Brink. I need, uh, I need Caitlin Clark. You gotta if you're gonna rig it, rig it the right way to give us the best possible matchups. I got to tell you too, since we're in the trust tree here, yeah. And their last game was rigged. I'm kind of turning on Caitlin Clark a little bit. No, there's definitely a feel I think nationally because she's in all these commercials. When we talk about women's basketball, she generally is the person that's kind of the face of all of the conversation. Definitely the face. Hey, she's the greatest. I mean, there were people bothered when I brought up the fact that she broke like. The scoring record. Well, technically, <laughs> he didn't have the three-point line. And I'm like, do you care that much? Who cares? Who like, cares? It's a cool accomplishment, okay? Yes. Can we can move on. So I think there's a little <laughs> bit of that. She's, and oh, by the way, like, even her dad gets upset watching her play. Like, shut yes, up. Yes. Shut up. <laughs> and she's a competitive freak who's screaming obscenities all the time. Like, I can kind of see why you, and I think some of America... If they're watching and paying attention to this tournament, they're probably rooting against her. I mean, they, if she makes it to the Final Four, uh, I'll give you a take right now. It will outrate the men's Final Four. That's kind of been something I'm curious about. Now, the men's Final Four, I believe, is on CBS, correct? Or is it TBS this year? I don't know if it's on. Uh, I don't. Let me look. If it's CBS, see. I think the men will actually outrate, but I do think the women can push. They'll close be on to ABC though. They're going to be yes. on ABC, so yes. it'll be network television as well. Yeah. So it's not like I, sometimes it's an apples to oranges fight of like they're on t on True TV and you're on CBS. It's a different can of worms. If they're on ABC and the men's is on CBS, I would still take Caitlin Clark because there's a chance they could play. Uh, LSU in the Final Four, like or L no, no, they'd have to get through LSU. L to okay, get that's to the right. Final I'm four. looking at the I top think they'd end like of the USC is in the other bracket. USC, Baylor, UConn, or Duke. So you could have Juju Watkins against Caitlin Clark in a Final Four, or UConn, or UConn. Gino yeah. versus Caitlin Clark. Yes. I don't know if I was going to make it at this point unless they keep getting the benefit of the whistle because they were luckier in hell to win that second round game. Um, but it just it watching her complain and flop. 
I can't stand it. Mm. I can't stand it. Like, I don't watch, a, I didn't watch a lot of her in the regular season. I saw the highlights of the record breaking moments. You're like, hey, whatever, that's cool. And I'm not going to get upset about terminology of a, of a record being broken. So it's like, all right, at, you know, women's tournaments here. I watched a little bit of that game on Monday. I'm like, damn, they might lose to West Virginia in the second round. Then I end, end up getting angry because they're getting all the whistles. And this is <laughs> stupid. Like, stop calling fouls on them. You this became is, a mountaineer. I did. I became a West Virginia <laughs> mountaineer. Go, Rich Rodriguez. And then the whole time, she's just yelling and complaining and flopping yeah and i can't stand it man and it's hilarious that a year ago we all stood by her side or not we all but the general sports population defend when angel reese did the get you one of these yeah. the ring thing and everybody vilified angel reese for that like how dare you and now a year later caitlin clark's just this flopping complaining villain and i can't stand her i uh i do i got upset yesterday because the rate the numbers came out and I'm, I'm i'm just happy people are watching basketball men's women's like that's the tournament. It's the time of year to watch basketball. Five million for a second round game is nuts. That is that is more. I think the only women's ba- games in the history of college basketball that top it are the national title games, like the last two years. Well, I, I actually there was a. Uh, I think they ran the numbers and this the attendance in general in co- women's college basketball is massive this year. It's yeah. an uptick all over the place. I was actually that number was great. I wasn't shocked. The number that caught me off guard was Kansas USC with Juju Watkins. That game started at 10 Eastern, and it almost pulled 2 million viewers. That's wild. That's an NBA game. That's wild. That's insane. Yeah. And she's a freshman, and the good thing about women's college hoops is these players are around for two, three years, so it's like your Duck Final Four team. You get to know the team. You get to know the players. Like, Oregon State, I think, is going to lose to Notre Dame. Notre Dame plays an up-tempo style. They've got a young point guard, I think a freshman point guard. She's really good. And I think they're going to lose. They were picked 10th preseason, so it's like you're playing with house money. Right, you're in the Sweet 16. What I find interesting and what I hate is I hate when the other side of it creates the division. You don't have to care that much or love women's college basketball. I think it's an entertaining product with these top-end players. I hate when the Stuart Mandels go, I think they're going to outrate the men. And it's like, now you're just... You're upsetting, <laughs> you're driving people to not want to care or pay attention to it. Controversial content. Yeah, you're creating division. It doesn't need to be divisive. We could just say Caitlin Clark against Juju Watkins would be outstanding television for yeah. two hours. That's all it needs to be. I think it's more so, I'm with the, like, it, that That kind of stuff definitely gets people riled up. I, I just find it in- interesting if it does end up happening, what it says about the state of the two sports. Because if you if like I, I'm sure whenever you talked women's college hoops when I was on leave I didn't do it a lot I did sure. it like once I, saw, I had a couple of interviews Oregon State yeah. won the big game you had yeah. the gal from the team on like mm-hmm. that's awesome that you did it and you and you put a spotlight on it I guarantee you you were met with a lot of no one cares no one's watching why are we talking about this right like you get a lot of that I get that for baseball and basketball sure. <laughs> it comes for every sport. But what's the argument going to – like, nobody ever bats an eye if we got a player from Duke on before their Sweet 16 match. you would be like, oh, all right, Duke's playing this weekend, okay, or this week in the Sweet 16. If they end up outrating the men in the Final Four in the National Championship game, like, if you get a South Carolina versus Iowa and it gets, like, 10 million viewers, mm-hmm. what's the argument going to be? I don't know. And I think your point yesterday was funny that sometimes we're simpatico because we, we were texting about these ratings. And I thought the same exact thing of, like, how cool is it that they have a, a system in place, not a system, but just the way their sport shakes out, that you have storylines build. There's career arcs. Like, Caitlin, Ar- or Caitlin Clark made it to the national championship game last year. She lost. Now she's back. Is she going to win? Will they fall short again? Mm-hmm. Like, college hoops used to be that on the men's side, where you would have these teams around for two, three, four years. They would get to the Sweet 16, and then they get to the Elite Eight, and they would fall short, and guys would come back. Let's go make one more run at it. And you were able to understand and know who the teams were as opposed to, I think most people are in thinking with me, Every year the tournament starts and you're like, oh, okay, who's on that? Who's on that team? Who's who's this guy? Sometimes it's your own team. Where did he transfer from? What conference is he from? Yeah. Like it's already happening since these uh, smaller market teams or mid major teams are getting bounced from the tournament. Like it's an insane number of guys already in the portal, and all the rosters will be new next year, and it's just really hard to follow. The women's game doesn't have that happening. If you had a two year mandate of college, I think the men's game would just come right back up. And and, pa- yes. and probably pass the women because you'd be more familiar. And for a lot of guys, they just they watch men's basketball more. I'm not oblivious to that. Of course. But having players around men or women, I just think knowing the players, knowing the storyline, knowing what's kind of on like the USC player, she might have her own Nike shoe and she's gonna be a sophomore in college. She's on AT&T commercials. Mm-hmm. 
I think you can make a real argument she was player of the year. Caitlin Clark will win it, yeah. but I think you make a real argument for her given USC was a one-and-done last year in the tournament, and the year before that they won like 10 games. They were terrible. But she's going to be back next year and probably the year after that. So, like, it gives you something to kind of look forward to as a sports fan. When is the Kim Mulkey story coming out? <laughs> I'm tired of waiting on this thing. I want that story. I feel like she teased it too much, and she now did. I'm, like, waiting and waiting and waiting when is this thing coming out? She was like, uh, her press conference was like watching a trailer. Do you think the movie's going to be great? And then the movie ends up sucking. <laughs> like, at what point am I going to get? I want this story. And she gave, she got me so riled up to read this story. Me too. That now I'm I'm jonesing for it. What do you think it's going to be about? Just being awful? I mean, I'm sure there are some details in there from former coaches and players that are less than flattering. Yeah. And I, But the specifics of it, who the hell knows? It clearly is something that struck a nerve with her. What I'll say about the tournament going, I'm going to be glued to that Iowa-Colorado game. I'm on it like Dude, a hawk, Colorado man. is a really good team. I'm on it like a hawk. That get, game get, is... Watch that. I'm glad you're going to watch that. Colorado is dangerous. Saturday at 1230, I believe. There you go. On ABC. There you go. The rating for that, num- that game is going to be insane. Network television at 1230 on a Saturday. Yep. I, they might get... 7 million people watching that game. Great. And I'm on it like a hawk. You better you better call it both ways, refs. You don't have to care. You don't have to watch. But you also don't have to say, who cares? Clearly people care more than they have ever before. Somebody is saying that the LSU Middle Tennessee game was even worse than that. And now I want to go look up because I didn't watch any of that. Oh, game. it's a great Middle Tennessee was beating them like pretty deep into the third quarter, and then they went on this insane run. They started getting fouls. They outscored them twenty four yeah. to seven in the fourth quarter and pulled away finally. Iowa LSU juggernauts last year probably still juggernauts, but they've kind of struggled out the gate. <laughs> Iowa struggled with Holy Cross. Uh, LSU struggled with Rice. Second games they struggle. We'll see what happens when they square off. I wonder if it's if o- they square if off. it's Otani's interpreter that's rigging these games, man. <laughs> like the foul discrepancy in that game, thirty-one to sixteen. There you go. Free throw discrepancy. LSU took thirty-seven free throws. The fix is in. Middle Tennessee took nine. Ah, the fix. Nine. Is in. It's rigged, man.